Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.13 has been released. This is Minecraft Snapshot 18W19A. We haven't had a snapshot for a couple of weeks, but that doesn't mean that there hasn't been work going on, so this one is a quite a meaty one. And it is also one of the last snapshots before pre-releases start. So pre-releases are coming soon, but for now this is Snapshot 18W19A. My name is Sliced Lime and together we're going to go through all of the changes in this one, but before we get into that, let me issue a warning. Opening any world that was from a previous snapshot in this snapshot will wipe the world clean and create it over. So if you've been playing on a world in the snapshots and you want to keep playing on it, do not open it in this snapshot version. Now there is a manual process for upgrading and that involves changing the data version from 1483 to 1484 on all chunks and then deleting the height map. This is using an NBT editor like NBT Explorer. Tomorrow there will be a B snapshot that will fix this properly. So my suggestion at this point is wait until tomorrow when we get 18W19B. Now, let's get into the changes in 18W19A. And to start off, we're gonna go through changes to world generation and world management. Upgrade paths when you open older worlds have been improved. That is, if you open a pre-1.13 snapshot world that is better in this version and in tomorrow's version, it will be better for snapshot versions as well. There are also new options for generating worlds in this one. The buffet generator type now has a caves option, that is the nether generator that will be applied to whatever biome you put in. There's also multiple biome support, you can get multiple biomes in by manually editing the JSON used by the generator. There's also a checkerboard option for that. There are also a number of fixes and changes to the world generation. In addition to that, in the previous version there was a debug mode that appeared before Buffet in the world creation menu that has been removed. Super flat preset the void stopped generating its starting platform. In this version the starting platform is back. There was also another problem with the super flat worlds. They would not generate pockets of ores properly and that is also fixed in this version. For normal world generation, seagrass will now generate in underwater caves properly. Heart of the sea items now generate inside of buried treasure chests. And there was a bug where too high grass was placed on the ocean floor and that could replace parts of ocean monuments. That's fixed in this version. More ocean fixes, seagrass would not generate correctly above stairs and kelp could spawn on top of trapdoors, stairs and slabs and chests inside of sunken ships. That's also fixed. In relation to other parts of the ocean, deep frozen ocean was not actually frozen, that's fixed in this version. And stepping out of the cold ocean into cold parts of the land, polar bears and rabbits didn't spawn in ice plains, they do now. In other parts of the world, trees would generate side by side, you could get two trees right one block next to each other, that's fixed in this version. And you could also get trees generating inside of village houses or as parts of fields, that's also fixed now. In conjunction to these problems, jungle biomes also got extremely cluttered, that's also fixed now. And with that, the extreme lag that would be felt inside of jungle biomes is now also fixed. Biome names have now been updated. Some notable ones are extreme hills, now called mountains, forest hills, now called wooded hills, and mesa has been renamed to badland. Mushroom islands are now known as mushroom fields, and the mutated extreme hills, the extreme hills M version, are now called gravelly mountains. Mutated mesa biomes, mesa M, are called eroded badlands, and mutated savanna, savanna M biomes, are called shattered savanna biomes now. Also a couple of fixes for how you spawn into the world. The buffet and island type could put you into the void when you spawned in, and that's fixed in this version. And in normal overworld spawn types, you could sometimes spawn underwater or even the middle of lava oceans, and that is also fixed. Let's move on to changes with mobs, but stay on the track of spawning. Mobs could spawn on ice in the previous version, that's fixed in this one. For specific mobs, turtles have had an upgrade to their egg laying spot finding algorithm, which means they no longer try to lay eggs in places they can't access, but you might have to help them out with placing a sand block because they will only lay eggs on the sand. Speaking of turtle eggs, the turtle egg item now has a new texture as well. 
Zombies were able to destroy turtle eggs even though there were a full block and a half in the way that's fixed in this version. And all undead mobs, when they are in water, will now sink instead of trying to swim, and they also know how to breathe now. However, zombies will still turn into drowned once they've been underwater for sufficient amounts of time. Zombies turning into drowned could gain tridents or fishing rods, and drowned zombies would always drop armor items instead of using random chance. Both of those fixed in this version. One undead mob in specific is a little more interesting to look at, that's the skeleton horse. They are now rideable underwater as well. Let's move on to some other underwater mobs, dolphins. They now have an effect when you are nearby called Dolphin's Grace. That effect will increase your swimming speed. And that actually stacks with the Depth Strider Enchant on boots, which can make you swim extremely quickly. There are a bunch of fixes to Dolphin AI as well. They wouldn't try to get back into the water if they were out of water, they do now. And if they were drowning, they didn't swim to the surface to get air. Now they do. Also, if you've set the no AI tag on dolphins, then they would take damage and die. There's also a problem with dolphins and phantoms. When you kill them, they wouldn't drop any experience orbs and that's fixed in this version. And speaking of phantoms, they have had an update, so they flap their wings more frequently now. Phantoms were also able to spawn inside of and collide with blocks. And they could also attack players even when on peaceful mode. And that is also fixed. And finally, when speaking about phantoms, the colors of the phantom spawn egg didn't match the actual colors of the mob that has been fixed in this version. Other mob news, zombie horses were invisible in a previous version and when you logged out and back in or restarted your server, they would be replaced with the regular zombies that is fixed in this one. If you name the sheep Jeb underscore, then it wouldn't change color as they have before, that's fixed in this version. And we also have a whole bunch of fixes to the various new fish mobs. Salmon mobs would often get stuck, that's fixed in this version. Pufferfish would only attack players and players would be the only other mobs that could get poisoned by them. They also attacked invisible players and players in creative or spectator modes. When you loaded into a world, all the pufferfish in the world would appear with their most inflated model. That's also fixed in this version. Salmon and tropical fish hitboxes when the fish were on the land were positioned wrong and the fins of dying cod and some tropical fish would show Z fighting. Cods would suffocate when they touched a solid block from below. And a final weird one, if you spawned in an invalid tropical fish variant, then it would still exist but would have no visible appearance, and when you hit it, your screen would turn completely red with an overlay. Let's talk about some fixes to crafting. If you got an uncarved pumpkin, that would unlock the recipe for jack-o'-lantern, even though that is supposed to be made with a carved pumpkin. That's fixed in this version. There was a problem with the fireworks star recipe that made it possible to duplicate or delete ingredients. Or you could desync your inventory or freeze the game. That is fixed in this version. You wouldn't be able to shift click smeltable items into a furnace in the previous version. And shift clicking any fuel into a non-empty furnace would only move the fuel client side visually, but not actually move it server side. More gameplay fixes. You were able to ride a floating boat underwater. That's fixed in this version. When fishing, the drops wouldn't come towards the player when you reeled them in, that's fixed as well. Experience orbs didn't float upwards in the water, they do now, and you were able to use fish buckets to destroy kelp, seagrass, coral, and coral fans. Bubble columns made by soul sand only appeared every other block, not every block, and the flowing water over magma boss would turn into a bubble column. If you had a waterlogged block, such as a fence or a sign or a ladder, that would not allow a bubble column to spawn next to them before, and in this version, that is fixed. If you were swimming and left the water, that would cause the player's arm to render out of the screen. Number of fixes to sea pickles as well. You were unable to place sea pickles on top of non-solid blocks, that's fixed in this version. And if you're standing on top of sea pickles and placing down more ones, they would glitch out when placing the fourth one, that's also fixed. And sea pickles would change their hitbox when increasing their counts, but turtle eggs wouldn't. That's fixed in this version. Banners and treasure markers of maps would show the incorrect icons when you're playing in multiplayer. Blue eyes didn't mine fast if you were using a pickaxe. And the how did we get here advancement didn't require conduit power. Speaking of the conduit, let's move on to some sound fixes. There are new sounds for the conduit.
and the beacon in this version. There are also a few bug fixes for sounds in this version. When you went inside of a bubble column in spectator mode, it would still play the sound as if you were physically entering the bubble column. And parrots didn't imitate the sounds of phantoms and the drowned. And that is now fixed in this version. There are a bunch of miscellaneous user interface related fixes as well. The game credits have been updated to include all of the newly hired Mojang staff. And the death screen when being killed by an exploding bed has the intentional game design text now linked to a bug on the issue tracker marked as will not fix. The book signing user interface didn't show the author name properly. And the miscellaneous tab in the furnace recipe book displayed an apple item. Now it displays a lava bucket and an emerald instead. Furnace recipe book availability toggle had a wrong tooltip, it said craftable instead of smeltable, and it also had a crafting table icon instead of a furnace icon. The tropical fish item was called clownfish, not tropical fish. And to round off, a couple of fixes to potion effects. The effects from the turtle master potion didn't show an amplifier in the user interface, and the slow falling effect was considered a negative effect that is now considered a positive effect. Let's move on and talk a little bit about technical stuff, behind the scenes stuff, mostly with commands, but also some other related things. The ice block tag was missing the frosted ice block that's been added in in this version. A fair few fixes to command auto completion. Auto completion would override command history, and the syntax help didn't clamp the right chat border properly. These fixes should make it easier to navigate and enter commands. The output of the slash seed command can now be copied. Server commands were available in single player, so you could slash kick yourself in the single player. And on a world open to LAN, you could slash kick or ban the server host. Those are fixed in this version. More permissions errors. Slash help would reveal op commands to non-operators. And typing slash help with an unavailable command would return an unexpected error message. There were also several other fixes to slash help, including it no longer having any paging and it not showing slash prefixes on command. More command fixes, you were unable to summon lightning bolts, that's fixed in this version. And there are a whole bunch of fixes for color management, especially team colors and the colors inside of raw text. I'm not gonna list them all here, if you want the details, go down into the video description where you can find the full changelog. The slash particle command now properly restricts the particles to the dimension it is supposed to act in, and the no gravity data tag now works again when applied to items. Let's look at some changes to the debug screen. The help list you get from pressing F3 and Q is now sorted alphabetically again. If you press F3 and C to copy your current coordinates, that would work even if coordinates display was switched off with the reduced debug info game rule. Also using F3 and C didn't copy the dimension, and it will now. The F3 menu now also shows the biome type name rather than the translated string, so you will see something like Minecraft colon and then the underscored name of the biome. A couple of fixes to the server to round things off. You were unable to start the server with the user interface, that's fixed in this version. And on startup, the preparing spawn area would spam 0%, that's also fixed. Now, a couple of bugs we already know about for this version. Like I mentioned at the start, worlds will get wiped if you open them in this version, and they have been opened in a previous snapshot. Be very careful. And also, tools like pickaxe will not work reliably in this version, so you might want to wait for tomorrow's version before trying this one out. It is a snapshot, they are not reliable, they can crash or corrupt your world, so if you try it on your world, do it with a backup, or try it on a separate test world. Now if you still want to try it, go into your Minecraft launcher, head into the launch options tab and switch on enable snapshots in there. Read the message, hit OK, and then go back to the news tab where now you'll have a latest snapshot profile in the drop down box next to the player button. Select that, start the game, and now you'll be playing the latest snapshot version, which is currently this one, 18w19a. And that finally brings us to the end of the very long list of changes for this version. I hope you enjoyed this update video, and if you did, help me out in return and leave a like. My name is Sly Slime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.